Coming up in our panel discussion, I'll be joined by True News founder and host Rick Walls and True News correspondent Edward Zoll. As we mentioned earlier in the Godcast, President Trump has retweeted and endorsed the statements of Wayne Allen Root that identifies the commander in chief as the King of Israel and the second coming of God. The president also said later in a statement to the press that he was the chosen one. Well, which one of those blasphemous statements offends you the most or do they offend you at all? We'll be talking about it here in just a few moments, so stay with us. But first, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor, The Holy Bible. Here's Max McLean from thelistenersbible.com with a reading from the Word of God from 2 John, Chapter 1. How does God view those who teach that His Son, Jesus, did not come to earth in the flesh? Listen to the Bible from 2 John 1. Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. From 2 John 1. Listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. Well, this is True News. I'm Rick Wiles. Just when you thought world news headlines could not become crazier, along comes President Donald Trump. Some days I wish I could simply say on this newscast what I'm really thinking. You know, I can't express some of my thoughts because, well, we're a Christian program and I need to maintain a proper decorum. If, however, I just let loose today and gave this show the title that's in my mind, three things would be in it. Donald Trump, bat dung, and crazy. Donald Trump went all the way into woo-woo world today. He is either possessed with a spirit of lunacy or he is publicly coming out as the son of perdition. Either way, it's downright scary. I can't believe I'm saying this today, but impeachment is too slow. Mr. Trump's comments today are the stuff that makes sane people read the 25th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The craziness started with Mr. Trump saying that Americans who vote for Democrats are greatly disloyal to the state of Israel and the Jewish people. He didn't stop there. He doubled down today by calling himself the chosen one. He also implied that he is the king of Israel and the second coming of God. Mr. Trump has amended the definition of citizenship loyalty to the United States of America. He says it requires total allegiance to the Zionist state of Israel. He specifically addressed his inflammatory remarks toward American Jews who typically vote overwhelmingly for Democrats. Therefore, the president of the United States of America told American Jews that, it, that if they do not fully support the Zionist state of Israel, and never question Israel's policies and actions. And if they vote for Democrats, they are not loyal citizens. This kind of talk is both un-American and dangerous demagoguery. Citizenship loyalty is not dependent on the political party you support. Neither is it dependent on them supporting the policies and actions of a foreign country. Imagine the outrage an uproar if Barack Obama told Asian Americans that their loyalty to America was proven by their votes for Democrats and their unquestioned allegiance to China or Saudi Arabia. I condemn President Trump's ridiculous demands that all Americans support the Zionist state of Israel to prove their loyalty to the United States of America. I also condemn his assertion that Jewish Americans must vote for Republicans and support Israel to prove that they are loyal Jews. Most American Jews are very liberal, and I disagree with them on most issues. I will always, however, defend their right to express their views. 
Unlike the political left, I do not support the suppression of free speech. On the issue of loyalty, I have a problem with hardcore Zionist Jews and hardcore Zionist Christians who demand dual loyalty to the United States and Israel. The truth is, most American Jews are not Zionists. They may express general support for the right of Israel to exist, but they have no personal interest in living there. They're quite happy living in the United States of America. Mr. Trump, however, is taking it to a new level. He equates unfailing support for Zionist Israel as the litmus test to prove your loyalty to America. He is also implying that American Jews are not loyal to their Jewishness if they do not support the state of Israel. Once again, imagine if Barack Obama told American blacks that they had to support a particular African nation to prove that they're loyal to their race. Mr. Trump's nonsense cannot be allowed to go unchallenged. His comments are ludicrous. This crazy talk is coming from the same mouth that recently said he wanted swift executions of people who commit hate crimes. Will Donald Trump define hate crimes that deserve capital punishment? Doc Burkhart has been closely following this astounding story throughout the day. Edward Zoll is with us to discuss and analyze Mr. Trump's comments. By the way, the seriousness of Mr. Trump's crazy remarks today compelled us to postpone the release of the rest of Edwards' interview with former Congressman Pete McCloskey. We'll let you know later this week when those interviews are going to be available. Doc, Edward, I, this is not a laughing matter. No, it's not. Because this is serious stuff because if, if it just stopped, it was bad enough with what Donald Trump said yeah. uh, about a litmus test, loyalty to the United States and Israel, that you have to be loyal to the United, you have to be loyal to the state of Israel. But it's gone beyond that. He's gone over into blasphemy. Yes. Serious blasphemy. So let's, for our audience, if you don't, if you haven't been following this today, this Hold on. You, you're going to see and hear some astounding, shocking things that happened today. Um, we'll start with, um, as uh, we just uh, talked about, uh, you know, he made the accusations. Uh, you know, he was aiming it at uh, Omar uh, Elan, mm -hmm. saying that she is not, uh, she's anti-Semitic, she's not a loyal American, she's not... She hates Israel. I mean, this is a guy, the president of the United States, who last week told the prime minister of Israel, do not permit two elected members of the United States House of Representatives to enter your country. Yes. Right. I am the president of the United States, and I do not want those members of the U.S. Congress allowed to enter your nation. I've never heard of such a thing in my entire life where a president has contacted a foreign head of state and said, block the entry of members of the U.S. Congress. It, Doc, it's just, it's unthinkable that it happened. And then, you know, there was a, a lot of uh, shenanigans on both sides. Sure. Right. You know, they were both using it for, uh, for headlines. Points. Yes. Um, but Donald Trump is the one who started it by saying, uh, these two congresswomen could not be in the state of Israel. Why? He said they hate Israel. Well, yeah, and that, that's the key part because the tone has increased now. It's stepped yes. up a little bit. It wasn't just a matter of that they were against policies and uh, you know, rules of law that might uh, involve Israel. They hate Israel. They hate Jews. That, that's what he's saying now. And, and he's putting that tag on them specifically. We're talking about members of Congress that he is putting that tag on in public tweets. Publicly elected officials. Who, there were separations of government here. I mean, President Trump cannot call to, and it's not even an enemy nation. Let's say it was like uh, Germany or Japan during World War II. No, uh, Israel is considered an unofficial ally. We're asking an allied country 
to block the travel of elected U.S. representatives. It's unheard of. We'd be calling out if it was a Democratic president to do this to Republican congressman. Uh, I don't know if we put it on the screen yet. The, this is uh, the still President Trump calls anti-Zionist Democrats uh, anti-Semitic. And, uh, okay, so this was the, uh, uh, the tweet. Right. It was a tweet from yesterday. President Trump said, sorry I don't buy Representative Tlaib's tears, referring to Rashida Tlaib. I have watched her violence, craziness, and most importantly, words far, uh, for far too long. Now tears? She hates Israel, President Trump tweeted, and all Jewish people. She is an anti-Semite. She and her uh, three friends are the new face of the Democratic Party. Live with it. Now he's referring to AOC, Representative uh, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, and uh, uh, Representative Ilhan Omar. So what he's done by this tweet that he put out yesterday is he's saying, all right, uh, Ilhan Omar and uh, Representative Tlaib, they are, the, they are the Democratic Party today. Therefore, the Democratic Party hates Israel, hates all Jews. And if you are Jewish, therefore, and you're supporting the, uh, the Democratic Party, does that make you anti-Semitic, by the way? <laughs> I mean... Well, if you follow his reason... Right. His reasoning, yes. And, and so that now that we're headed towards a hate crime. Right. Which then takes us towards his demand for... Swift execution. Swift execution of people who commit hate crimes. By the way, Congresswoman Tlaib, it cannot be anti-Semitic because she is Semitic. Right. <laughs> She's yes. Palestinian. She's Semitic. She's more Semitic than the Ashkenazi Jews who took her property. It doesn't right. get more authentic than that. I, th see, <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's propaganda. It's propaganda. All right, you had European Ashkenazi Jews go to Palestine in the 1940s and using rifles and bombs and grenades stole the land from the Semitic Palestinian Arabs. They were the Semitic people. Yes. All right. And so now in this Alice in Wonderland reality, so we have the Mad Hatter defining, defining what anti-Semitism is, all right? I would say that the Ashkenazis who went to Palestine in the 1940s were the anti-Semitic people. I agree with you. I mean, if you stole land from Semitic people, the Palestinians. You're anti-Semitic. You're anti-Semitic. So you've got the... The anti-Semitic thieves, the Ashkenazis, uh, calling anybody who questions their activities, they're calling them anti-Semitic. Right. So anyhow, that's, that's how crazy this stuff is. He's calling a Palestinian anti-Semitic, and she is Semitic. Well, Rick, this is an example, of really, of a hostile takeover of the platform. The, the argument for the longest time has been, even on the Democratic Party side, that a two-state solution is something they want to move toward. We actually saw this past week, AIPAC. AIPAC was forced, and uh, arguably uh, condemned by uh, Zionists, to say, you need to stop telling uh, your members that uh, the Democrats and others support a two-state solution. That is not what the Zionists and the Likud Party want. And uh, what we're seeing here is there are three major groups in America. There's the J Street, uh, which is Wall Street, mostly leftist uh, Jews, APAC, and then the... And APAC uh, is the Zionist Jews. The Zionist Jews. The, and uh, the last one, a Republican Jewish coalition. And this is the right-wing kind of Sheldon Adelson. Uh, very uh, Zionist. Very uh, Zionist. Hardcore nationalistic, ultra-nationalist. And the one group that has fully endorsed President Trump's statements is that group, the Republican Jewish coalition. Well, but the rhetoric from the president has been increasing, and uh, what we're seeing now is he's accusing Jews who vote for Democrats. He's saying not only they're, first of all, they're ignorant, all right? And he called them ignorant. He said, you're, you're showing ignorance, but also you're disloyal. And when you first read those reports and hear that, you're thinking, oh, uh, he's meaning that they're, who are they, who, who, is, who are American Jews being disloyal to? America? At, at first it's disloyal, you're thinking it's disloyal to the United States of America. That's the way it appears. So he's calling American Jews ignorant and disloyal. Now, Rick, if you called American Jews, if you, Rick Wiles, called American Jews ignorant and disloyal, what would happen? ADL would put out a news release tomorrow. Right. And they'd have that clip on Right Wing Watch, wouldn't they? Of course. But President Trump just called 70 percent 
of the Jewish population, that's about the voting block of American Jews that vote Democrat. 70% of American Jews, he called them ignorant and disloyal. But the question is, was it really about America that they were being disloyal to? And that, and we're going to look at that here. And he, he's minutes. implying that they were disloyal to the state of Israel. And if you really want to get into the dual loyalty issue, it's the hardcore Zionists who are loyal to Israel more than they are loyal to the United States of America. Right. But he's flipping this thing around. So let's play, uh, this is a, um, number 25, this is a President Trump saying that any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, is disloyal. Where has the Democratic Party gone? Where have they gone where they're defending these two people over the state of Israel? And I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, uh, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. All right. Now, if you'd just seen that by itself, the question would be, the disloyalty question, it's implied it's disloyalty to America that way. So we needed some clarification on that. Was it disloyalty to America that he was talking about? Well, later on in the day, during a press spray, as he was getting ready to go to Louisville, Kentucky, for the ANVITS uh, convention, uh, President Trump addressed the, uh, the press and actually said, actually clarified this, what he meant by it. And so that's clip number 26 here, uh, where he says Democrats are being disloyal to Jews and to Israel. He says this specifically. So let's watch this. No president has done what I've done. We have a group, I call it AOC plus three. You could call the person Representative Talib. You could say Representative Omar. You could go any way you want to go. Uh, they are anti-Semites. They are against Israel. She had a plan to greatly embarrass Israel by going there with the, the fact that she wanted to see her grandmother. I assume that's true. I hope that's true. But it was very bad. Very bad, the things that she and others of that group and other Democrats have said. And they have become the face of the Democratic Party. And I will tell you this, in my opinion, the Democrats have gone very far away from Israel. I, I cannot understand how they can do that. They don't want to fund Israel. They want to take away foreign aid to Israel. They want to do a lot of bad things to Israel. In my opinion, you vote for a Democrat, you're being very disloyal to Jewish people, and you're being very disloyal to Israel. And only weak people would say anything other than that. Very clear heard, now. That, that's clear. The, the disloyalty was not to America. The disloyalty that's being accused of is to Israel. Yes. And it's a guilt trip. What do you he, think about Yes, he is America's first Jewish president. Mm. He is... His administration is about Israel first, not America first. It's Israel first. He is the most radical defender of Zionism ever to be in the White House. And he's drawing a line that says, if you do not march to my tune, I'm going to brand you as a disloyal person. But it's, in his mind, it's, dual disloyalty. Mm. Right. That's a new phrase, dual, dual disloyalty. disloyalty. Right. You're disloyal to both nations if you do not march to his tune of Zionism. Now, what if there are people out here watching or listening? And by the way, yes, Mr. President, I do want to cut off all foreign aid to Israel. Yes, to and, and, and everybody. An, <laughs> and another thing, Mr. President, do you have any comprehension why Congresswoman Tlaib has to get past IDF soldiers with guns to visit her grandmother? Have you asked yourself that question? Have you asked John Bolton, your national security advisor, why can't she just go in and see her grandmother? Right. Because she has to get past IDF checkpoints because the IDF is militarily occupying the West Bank where her grandmother lives. And so if you're a Palestinian outside of the West Bank, you have to get past Israeli soldiers to go visit your own family. Right. And you just have to hope that those soldiers don't feel like shooting a child that day. 
Yes, that's, that's always possible. Like a little 10-year-old boy they shot in, uh, shot in the head a couple weeks ago. Yes, now, up to this point, this, this would be shocking enough for a day right here, yes. <laughs> up to this point. But before we proceed any further, I want to ask you a question. You know, uh, there would be some that would be watching or listening today that might say, well, this is all just political trash talk. You know, it's, uh, it's just politics. You know, uh, it's, it's okay to trash the other person. It happens all the time in politics. But really, this takes on a whole new tone, doesn't it? This isn't, you know, uh, saying, you know, I don't like Congressman, you know, so and so because he's cross-eyed or whatever it might be, or so. The, you know, there, there, there's always that in politics. In this particular case, the, it, we're pinning uh, hatred. Uh, we're pinning the uh, the defense of our nation and the defense of other nations based on trash talk. I mean. This isn't a pro wrestling event. This isn't a, 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 a long running TV show. I mean, this is reality. This is real politics that we're dealing with here. That's right. But how would you respond to somebody who said this is just all political talk? It's not political talk. I mean, I know what Donald Trump's trying to do. He's trying to shave a percentage of the Jewish vote off of the Democratic vote. He's trying to drive a wedge in the, Demo in the Democratic Jewish voting bloc you know, he's trying to knock off a chunk of it for the 2020 election. I get that. But here's the part I don't like. Why is our national discourse polluted and interrupted by another country? Do you know of any other country that interjects itself inside our nation and is so deeply involved in the affairs of our nation that, so that, Americans, every day. that Americans are at each other's throats over another nation. You mean like all the members of Congress that are dual citizens in China? Right. Or all the members of Congress that are dual citizens in Russia? Right. I mean, they don't exist, does they it? They don't exist. But, but it goes beyond just the dual citizenship. It, it's, it's in our churches. It's an obsession. Yes, it's an idol. Israel has become an idol in America. It's idolatry. And Zionism has become so intertwined in every part of our society, our entertainment, our politics, our government, our education, our laws, our churches, Zionism, 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 Zionism. Right. And I'm like, get out of our faces. We're fed up with it. You're causing Americans to argue and fight among themselves over a foreign country. Right. Why am I sitting here spending my time? How much time do we devote here at this organization to unraveling the lies of Zionism in America? Because the minds of American people have been captured by Zionism. And it's a spiritual issue. We're yes. spiritually bound yes. to this. Well, now up to this point, it, you know, this was just a, a normal day on the uh, Zionism TV channel, okay? It's a Wednesday. We're in the commercial break, but then the opening of the Twilight Zone just comes, comes on right now. And Rod Serling steps out here at this point yes. because the day got really weird, didn't it? It got extremely weird. Uh, and, you know, I just, when Doc told me what was happening, I, I told him, I said, I, we already know the theme of today's program. Uh, stop everything we're doing for today's Godcast. We're now switching over to this theme. So um, it started with uh, Wayne Allen Root, a uh, man I've interviewed him in the past. He was a Libertarian Party vice presidential candidate, I think 2012, a businessman in, in Las Vegas. Um, libertarian, very active in the Libertarian Party, but then he became... Um, he became the founder of the Jewish Republican Coalition, coalition chapter, chapter for Las Vegas. And, of course, uh, th that puts him into direct uh, relationship with Sheldon Alderson. Sheldon uh, actually hired him to write a column for the Las Vegas Review. Yeah, yeah. Sheldon b owns the Las Vegas Review, and plus uh, the is Israel Hayam newspaper. Yeah. And, and so Sheldon hired him. Uh, to, to write uh, pro-Zionist uh, articles. I, I did not know that Wayne Allen Root is a professing Christian. I didn't know that until today. 
I knew he was Jewish, but I didn't know he was a Christian. I had no idea because he was a libertarian. Well, how can you be a libertarian and support legalized abortion and mm. legalize, you know, same-sex marriage and all that kind of? How can you do that? All right, that's the, that's the problem with the libertarian view. Right. Like, hey, government doesn't make any rules, no regu No, that's not right either. Okay, that's the libertarian uh, way, and um, so I didn't know that until today. And, and, and so I, you know, I read a little bit about him. Um, uh, he he said. I believe, uh, this, he's got a radio program, he said, I believe Donald Trump should be called America's first Jewish president. He, he wrote this on an article that was posted on Fox News, on their website. He said, I should know I'm an Ivy League educated Jewish kid from New York. Right. He said, uh, Oh, now, he gave an interview to the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. He said all four of his grandparents are Jewish. His DNA shows him 99.5% European Jewish. Okay, so that makes him Ashkenazi. Yes. Right. Uh, he lives, uh, as we said, in Las Vegas, founded the Republican Jewish Coalition chapter, um, worked as a writer, you know, uh, for Sheldon Aldison. Uh, listen to this. He says... The article says, this is a JTA article, uh, Root told JTA, quote, he took Jesus Christ as savior, end of quote, about 30 years ago, but still considers himself Jewish. Uh, Mr. Root, you, you don't take Jesus as savior. He's not a, he's, he's not a vitamin. And he's not a product. You don't right. take him as your savior. You, you, you believe on his name mm. and you submit to his lordship. Um, the article points out that uh, other Trump defenders are Jews turned Christians, Jay Sekulow, Larry Klayman. Um, listen to this statement from Wayne Allen Root. Quote, Jesus Christ was a Jew and the CEO of the Christian religion. And to quote, Root added that he too was Jewish and a CEO. Uh, Mr. Root, Jesus is not the chief executive officer of a nonprofit religious organization. He is the Son of God. Mm. He is the Word incarnate. Yes. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's not a CEO. You and him are not peers, peers seeing eye to eye. He, he's not a corporate executive. He owns it all. He made it all. That's right. He's sovereign. Hallelujah. He's coming back in glory. And every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Sheldon Aldison will bow his knees and confess with his lips, Jesus Christ is Lord. Benjamin Netanyahu will bow his knees and confess with his lips, Jesus Christ is Lord. Kahani will bow his knees and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody, I don't care who they are, everybody. Donald Trump will bow his knees and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody will do it. That's who's coming back, Mr. Root. Not a CEO, but the conquering king who will rule in righteousness, not for a thousand years. He's not going to rule a Jewish empire in Jerusalem for a thousand years. He's going to rule forever. His yes. kingdom shall have no end. That's what the creed says. His kingdom shall have no end. He'll have a new earth and a new Jerusalem. And he will rule forever. Well, anyhow, let's go to what. So that set the stage. All right. Wayne Allen Root got this going today by making some really bizarre statements. So, Doc, I'm going to let you take it. What did Wayne Allen Root say? And then how did Donald Trump get involved in it? All right, so Wayne Allen Root, he uh, has his uh, uh, podcast, uh, video podcast on Newsmax that uh, he does every day. And the day before yesterday, he 
uh, was uh, taking phone calls toward the end of his program and was answering a phone caller's question. And he went into a soliloquy about Donald Trump and specifically, and this is news now, it seems like everywhere except on Fox News, by the way, um, CBN that too, don't yeah, uh, they, don't, and they, they don't say anything about it. But Wayne Allen Root <laughs> identified Donald Trump as the king of Israel and the second coming of God. Now, mind you, uh, you know, Wayne Allen Root is a darling, not just among Jewish, uh, the Jewish community out there, but also among evangelical Christians as well. And libertarians. Yes. Right. And so he's got all three camps that he can address to. It might just be best to let our viewers and listeners hear what Mr. Root had to say from his own lips, and then we'll explain how the president got involved in this. So here's Wayne Allen Root with his remarks on his uh, video uh, podcast on Newsmax. Don't forget, I don't know if you haven't watched the show, I happen to be Jewish by birth, and 75% of all Jews vote Democrat, and they don't like Trump, and this is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world, not just America. Trump's the best president for Israel in the history of the world, and the Jewish people love him like he is the king of Israel. They love him like he is the second coming of God, and in America, American Jews don't like him. They, they don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense. But that's okay. He keeps doing what he's doing. He's good for all of us. Good for Jews, good for blacks, good for gays. He's good for everyone in America who wants a job. Good for everyone in America that wants a job, wants to keep a job, I guess. And so, uh, so Mr. Root made this statement. And, you know, if the statement had just been left alone, no one would have known anything about it, really. We wouldn't have been talking about it today, except for the fact that President Trump retweeted Mr. Root's quote. Very, quote there. So if we get that uh, quote up on the screen. And he actually, it, he didn't retweet mm -hmm. because there was no tweet. There, there was no tweet. They had Mr. To actually, Trump published it. Published the quote. Verbal quote. Right. So uh, this is uh, uh, President Trump. And it reads like this. Thank you to Wayne. And this is uh, the quote from uh, the president here. Thank you to Wayne Allen Root for the very nice words. President Trump is the greatest president for Jews and for Israel in the history of the world, not just America. He is the best president for Israel in the history of the world, and the Jewish people in Israel love him. And he's basically endorsing what Mr. Root has just said. He's like he's the king of Israel. They love him like he's the second coming of God. But American Jews don't know him or like him. They don't even know what they're doing or saying anymore. It makes no sense, but that's okay. If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's good for uh, all these different groups. And so, as I said, if Mr. Root had just said that and it had gone out into the ether, probably no one would have cared. We wouldn't have caught up with it for a long time. But when the president uh, posted this quote from the program, that meant that someone actually had to lift that, those comments up from the program, write them out, bring them to the president for them to be retweeted. So there was a thought process in this. Or, Doc, it's the other way around. No. The White House gave the quotes to Wayne Allen Root, and he read them. Which is believable, because Wayne Allen Root has been quoted before as saying, we need a miracle. I believe Trump is our miracle. Well, it's very possible they gave him talking points. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Wiles. <laughs> if someone called you the king of Israel and called you the second coming of God, and you happened to hear about it, all right, someone published that out there, and uh, on a, a radio show or in print somewhere, and you heard about it. Someone said that you're the king of Israel. Someone said that you're the second coming of God. How would you respond to that? Would you, uh, you know, embrace that, or would you have some sort of response to it? I, I would rebuke them yeah. immediately. Why rebuke, would you rebuke them? I would rebuke what they said. I would denounce their words, and, and I would grieve in my spirit that somebody even said it about me. It would, it, would, it would greatly grieve me that somebody even used my name in that kind of blasphemy. You certainly wouldn't send it out on a White House Twitter account, the president's Twitter account, to the whole world and say, hey, look, look what this guy said about me. He said they love me in Israel. They think I'm the second coming of God. They, they think I'm the king of Israel. Right. No, that's blasphemy. And let me tell you something, Mr. Trump, you're getting, I think what I'll do is 
I'll go to the drugstore today and I'll, I'll buy you a large bottle of Parasite Cleanse because you're going to need it if you continue talking like this because you're going to get what Herod got. Mm. A, an intestines full of parasites. That's how Herod died. His stomach split open and, and all the maggots came out of him. He was cursed for allowing people to worship him as a god. Deify right. him. Yes. So you beware, Mr. Trump. You're on dangerous ground. I am speaking to you now. I am speaking to you right now with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, Donald Trump. I'm telling you, you need to repent of your blasphemy. You need to humble yourself before the Almighty God, before he removes you from this earth. Your mouth is blaspheming the Lord. He'll remove you from power. If he has to, he'll remove you from the planet. You're on dangerous ground. And any preacher who refuses to condemn these words, you too are on dangerous ground. And God will remove you from your ministry. You better take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. The world is entering a, a dangerous, dangerous place, Doc. It is. Powerful world leaders, the President of the United States, talking like a lunatic. Become drunk with power. They're starting to believe the very things that are being said about them. In this case, President Trump has Christian Zionists whispering in his ear, telling him he's Cyrus. Well, Rick, these statements today, I can't argue that he doesn't believe it. And he doesn't himself believe the prophecies, the things being said about him, the things that he must do for certain sects and certain groups in the country and the world. This is, this is making headlines, Edward, all over the world. I will show you number 28. This is the, the headline from the Times of Israel today. Trump tweets claims Israelis love him like he is the second coming of God. President Trump, you are not my Jesus. <laughs> okay. Uh, if, how, how many years since ago were you in Bible school? Oh, about 30. 30 years ago. 30 plus. If, if your, one of your professors said, Doc Burkhart, someday 30 years from now, the President of the United States is going to say he's like the second coming of God. I would say you're completely out of your mind for even suggesting that. that not America, not, not the United States. Yeah. yeah, we have it happening right now. Look, I rebuke Barack Obama. Obama never said he was a God. His supporters mm. said he was Godlike. Right. That's right. And I rebuked them and I rebuked him for not rebuking them. Right. I said, you have, to, you have to denounce their words. You have to tell them, do not speak that way about me. It's like in, in, in the book of Acts, when people would fall down before the apostles, they rebuked them, said, don't do this. That's right. right. They were not worthy of we're, we're men just like you, all right? You don't worship us. It's a terrible sin. Don't ever let somebody treat you like that. And when somebody's talking about you that way, you have to correct them. You have to go on record saying, no, I am not godlike. I am a sinner in need of a savior. Mm. And I'm not worthy to be considered a, a, a righteous, holy God. I mean, it's just blasphemy that is coming out of this man's mouth. But this is the same man who said he never did anything wrong that he needs forgiveness for. And yeah, just a couple months ago, he publicly took the Lord's name in vain twice that we know of, probably yeah. more than that. Remember the Trump supporters watching us and you, oh, you got so mad at me because I rebuked Donald Trump for saying the Lord's name in vain. And the Christian Zionist preachers in America, they zipped their lips and they didn't say a word. Right. Not a peep, yeah. nothing. They're not saying anything now They're either. not saying anything right now. Um, let's, this gets worse. Yes, as if it could get worse. Yeah, this, honestly, this gets worse. It's, it, this, this is all today, folks. It's all happened today. 
So where do we go now, now that he's declared himself the second coming of God? All right. So this story, of course, was getting out there earlier in the day. Uh, as I mentioned before, he was uh, preparing for his trip to Louisville, Kentucky for the AMVETS convention. He was at a press spray that I mentioned earlier. During the press spray, they asked him a question about the trade war with China. Now, you might not think that this is a, a connection to this, but his response to what was going on with the, uh, uh, you know, the negotiations and everything took on a whole new level of in incre incredible statements now. Uh, let's watch this. This is President Trump uh, responding to uh, uh, the uh, trade war talks. This is cut number 30. Watch how he responds to this statement. Intellectual property theft. Add that to it and add a lot of other things to it. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on China on trade. And you know what? We're winning. What, what did he just do there? What he did looked, he just? He looked at the sky and says, I am the chosen one. As if he needed to convince himself. That's first I've seen this. Really? That's, let's watch it again. I, I didn't see I, this I want, our, I want our audience to really get a, get a hold on this to see what President Trump did. He looked to he, the sky and said, I am the chosen one. Watch this. Intellectual property theft. Add that to it. And add a lot of other things to it. So somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on China on trade. And you know what? We're winning. Rick, when I saw this the first time today, a chill went down my back. Doc, this is scary. This is really scary. We're moving so fast towards the end of the age, the end of the age of mankind. We're now like strapped in and we're on a rocket ride now. Mm. This is moving fast. And I, I just plead with those of you who, if you're agnostic, atheist, just wondering, or you kind of know that Jesus is real, but you haven't been quite willing, you know, to make that, please, please, I'm, I'm pleading with you. Please, please come to Jesus, all right? You, you need salvation. This world is going insane. And we're now, we're now on a rocket towards the end. It's moving rapidly. The President of the United States is looking up at heaven saying, I'm the chosen one. On the same day that he tweets out that, hey, they're saying I'm the second coming of God. They're saying I'm the king of Israel. They're, they're saying, Look at all this stuff they're saying about me. This man's now delusional. He's delusional. And one of two things is happening here. Either Donald Trump is going crazy in real time and we're watching this man lose his marbles. He's going crazy. Or he's publicly coming out as the son of perdition, mm. the man of sin, whom people commonly refer to as the Antichrist. I don't know if he is, but he's talking like one. Right. He, he's scaring me, that's scary stuff. He certainly now has a spirit of Antichrist on him. Antichrist is a spirit. He has a spirit of Antichrist on him. This man is, when you start talking like this, he will go insane. Yes. If you're not insane, Doc, you start talking like that, you will go insane. Right. A spirit of madness will come on him. This yes. man will go insane. Yeah, and if no one challenges you, no one calls you on it, <laughs> you'll continue in it. Yes. And if people celebrate it, you're going to think this is the right And path. that same spirit will come on the people that won't condemn it. Mm. Right. If they celebrate it or won't condemn it, that same spirit of madness will come on you. But I want to go back. I'm saying to the, the atheists, the agnostics, the, the people that are just you're just outside of the church. Please, please come in, please. I'm asking you, I'm pleading with you, come in. I love you, I don't condemn you. 
have to tell you, we're, we're racing towards the end of the world. The end of the world. The end, not just the world, the universe. It all ends at one time in a, just a split second, Christ comes through the sky. There's no seven-year tribulation. There's no secret pre-tribulation rapture. There's a time of great tribulation, which we have no idea how long it lasts. There's no secret rapture where Jesus comes and takes the evangelicals, the Baptists, and the Pentecostals, and the Charismatics, and you know, the, the, the Messianics, and they're all taken out, and, you know, planes are crashing because the pilots disappeared, and cars are driving off the road because the drivers are gone, and dad comes home, and the house is empty because mom and dad, and mom and the kids were raptured. That, that, it's a wild fiction. That's fiction. Christian science fiction. Yes, Christian sci-fi made up by Tim LaHaye and that whole gang. Listen, Jesus Christ comes back like that. He breaks through the sky, and he's in your face for the whole world at one time. It's Christ. He's there. The entire planet is looking at him. Suddenly, unexpectedly, Christ comes through the sky. And everybody knows the age of mankind is over. It's done. Finished. It's Christ who's there. That's how fast and suddenly it will happen. And you're either saved or you're lost. There, there's no repenting when Christ comes back. There are no, there's no repentance when he comes back. It's over. When he comes through the sky, it's over. Either you're saved or you're lost. And you can only be saved by repenting of your sins, turning from your wicked ways, believing on the name of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the Savior of the world, God in human flesh, born to a virgin who was crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, and ascended back to heaven. You have to believe on Him, Jesus Christ. You need to be baptized. You must be baptized. Confession and baptism. Please get it done. Please get it done. We're running out of time, my friends. We're running. It's, this is going fast. I want to show you what else he did. To, so, all right. In that same press spray, where he's addressing reporters, of course, the uh, the tweets he had made earlier of uh, Mr. Root's uh, quotes and everything had already been out for several hours, and that was uh, everyone uh, was talking about it. One of the reporters at the uh, press spray before he left for Louisville asked him a question, what, basically, what do you believe about the second coming of God? Uh, obviously making a reference to the tweet that the president had made. And he out sent it out. It. Yeah, so the president sent the tweet out. He owns it. Right. So the reporter asked the question of the president, what do you believe about the second coming of God? Watch the president's stare. Now, I've never seen the president speechless before today, but watch this. Sir, do you believe you're the second coming of God? Sir, do you believe you're the second coming of God? Actually, the, the pause there was a little bit longer than that, and so it was, uh, it was really quite spooky, the silence that uh, was after that question, as if to say, you know, how do you respond to that? If, what, what do you say to that? He didn't deny it. Okay. He believes he is the second coming of God. What are you going to do, Christian Zionist, when he comes out and says, I am the second coming? Of You've God. told him that. Yes. You've told him that. Yes. You Christian Zionist, you did this to him. You created this monster. Yes, you did it. We told you in 2016 to pray for his soul, his salvation, that the church needed to get around that man and disciple him, and you didn't do it. Stay you used him, it you works. used him to promote your John Nelson Darby crazy eschatology. That's what it was all about, Doc. We can use Trump to prove to everybody that John Nelson Darby was correct. 
That's what this is all about with Christian Zionists. Right. Yeah, they don't care about Jews, whether they go to hell. They don't care. They only care about proving that John Nelson Darby was correct. Yeah, they don't care whether the, the Jews get saved or well, at least we care about whether the Jews get saved or not. Most Christian Zionists don't care if Jews get saved. They're going to get saved after we're gone anyway, right? It's after a, we're raptured. It's a hateful theology. No, they teach. They teach that they're saved now. That's that's the, that's true, right? But they have no uh, Christian Zionists do not will not t tell Jewish people you don't get a pass because of your race. You have to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. And they won't do that. But they've told Donald Trump that he was King Cyrus. He was a reincarnation of Cyrus. Right. Lance Wallnau, you lied. Lance Wallnau, you lied. You told Donald Trump he was Cyrus. Jim Baker, you lied. You told Donald Trump he was King Cyrus. All these Christian Zionists, okay? Stephen Strang, you, you're publishing books, making money on this lie that he's, he's King Cyrus. He's some, some God-sent deity. And even King Cyrus didn't even believe that. King Cyrus, back, back in the Old Testament, didn't believe God was using him. In the historical records that Cyrus wrote down, even though the Bible says that uh, God used Cyrus to deliver the Jews, King Cyrus, uh, in his historical record, says, I delivered the Jews. I did this. It was me. No, other, no one else was involved in it. Certainly not God. And that, and that sounds like something Trump would say. Mm. Yes. God didn't have anything to do with any of these things. I did it. And so if you're going to give him the title of King Cyrus, he's got to own all of it. And that if he owns all of it, that means he's taking credit for everything that's happened. And he does take credit for it. He said, I moved the embassy to Jerusalem. I gave the Golan Heights. I did this. Not that, you know, I've never heard, I've never heard Donald Trump give glory to God for anything. No, he, he uses God's name in vain. That's right. Now, something else that the Zionists did was they, they deified him by putting his face on a coin. And a bunch of these crazy, delusional Christian Zionists in America bought these coins. Yeah, but, and a lot of leading folks out there have been hawking the, this, this stuff for now all close to a year and a half. On right? their Christian TV and radio shows. So there is Trump and Cyrus. And on there it says, and he charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem. Now this is a crying call for the third temple. That's what this institute behind the coin, that's their mission. They want a third temple built. And the Christian Zionists have endorsed this and, and promoted. Millions, tens of millions of dollars have been raised with this coin. Yes. In fact, so much money has been raised, they could have built the temple several times over. That's right. And the money is going into an organization in Israel run by... Uh, Lubavitchers, right. which are uh, Kabbalah mysticism, uh, you know, my Kabbalah is voodoo that Jews do. Right. And that's what they practice. And, and you get these delusional, goofy, gullible Christian Zionists giving them hundreds of millions of dollars They've re to build a third temple that right. God doesn't want. God, God destroyed the first two. They've reestablished the Sanhedrin, and I hear evangelical Christians applauding that. I was like, what? What are you talking about? They reestablished the Sanhedrin. Remember what the Sanhedrin did to Jesus the first time? Well, uh, Jim Baker said they treated him rough. 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 Oh. Then they, isn't that what he said? He said, didn't the Sanhedrin kind of treat, treat Jesus a little rough or, you know? Yeah, they, they crucified him, Jim. They killed our Savior. They sentenced him to death. Why? Because they knew he was the son of God. Right. They knew it. They, they wanted to steal his inheritance. How do I know that? Because Jesus told us in the parable. Of the husbandman, yes. Yes. He said, you know, the, the son came and the workers of the field said, if we kill the son, we'll receive the inheritance. That's right. Jesus knew their game. He knew That's their right. plan. And what's the inheritance? They want to inherit the world, right. which is Zionist domination of the planet. That's what they're after. They're not after the kingdom of God. They're after the domination of the whole planet. So 
Uh, so we got the, the, the Zionists, the Christian Zionists, deifying Donald Trump, calling him King Cyrus, putting his face on a coin, selling the coin. Telling him he's the chosen one, that God placed him there. Um, and I believe God is, he did have, has used Donald Trump, that he has. But the purpose was as a doorstop to allow for America to repent. Yes. And we haven't repented. We've doubled down on our sin. We're just sinning more now than we were two and a half years ago. And a doorstop is just a piece of dumb rubber. A doorstop doesn't have any other purpose. What can you do with a doorstop? No one glorifies their doorstop. Throw it at your brother-in-law. What can you do with a doorstop? The only thing that's changed is we've delayed destruction. That's the only thing. That's and now changed. we're speeding it up. Yes. You understand we're, we're, what we're I'm saying? We're pulling the door now. He, we're now speeding up the judgment on America. We're speeding it up now. We slowed it down a couple of years ago, but now it's back in motion. It's speeding up. And now it, this, uh, this, the Christian Zionists own this. They own the judgment that's coming on America. I want to put number 40 on the screen because I'm going to call out the top 10 Zionists in America. Rabbi John Hagee, Rodney Howard Brown, Jensen Franklin, Paula White, David Jeremiah, Bob Jeffress, Lance Walnow, Jonathan Kahn, Jim Baker, Michael Brown, and a lot more. They're just, for today, the top 10 Christian Zionists in America, but mostly the entire evangelical wing of the church in America is, is Zionists. You men and women own this monstrosity that we're talking about here today. You own it. You created this monster in Donald Trump. You told him he was Cyrus. You told him God put him there, that God is using him to save Israel. What are you going to do about his blasphemy? Are you going to call him down on it? Are you going to rebuke him? Are you going to go to the White House? Many of you that I just showed you pictures, you're on the presidential uh, evangelical advisory board, whatever the official title is. Well, do you advise him of the spiritual danger that he's in for blaspheming the holy God? Or are you going to be silent? I'm calling you out right now. And I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep calling out your names. I'm going to make you speak. I'm going to put so much heat on you people that you have to speak. I'm not going to let you hide. Jensen Franklin, come out and speak. You're being groomed to be Rabbi Hagee's successor. You drank the Kool-Aid and you see the money dangling in front of you. The, the money, the prestige, the access. You see it, Jensen, and you want it really bad. All you have to do is just make the deal. Make the deal. You're so close to losing your place in the kingdom of God. Are you men and women going to stand for God or are you going to stand for Israel? Choose one. True Israel is the church. Yeah. It's always been the yes. ecclesia, the called out ones from the days of Abraham. God called Abraham, it's the ecclesia. Abraham and his, the ecclesia, the called out ones, called out to be a people of God, the people of promise, the people of faith. People of the way. That's right. So it's the people of faith, the people of promise. Abraham was not looking for old Jerusalem and a strip of land. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Right. He doesn't want to come back to live in Israel. You think that's what Abraham is dreaming about right now? Abraham and all the patriarchs will be with Jesus Christ in the eternal kingdom when Jesus Christ comes back. So I'm calling you Christian Zionists. Take a stand. I'm challenging you, every one of you, John Hagee, 
Rodney Howard Brown, Jensen Franklin, Paula White, Jeremiah, David Jeremiah, Bob Jeffers, Lance Wallnow, Jonathan Kahn, Jim Baker, Michael Brown. Take a stand. Rebuke Donald Trump's blasphemy. And call on that man to repent of his sins and believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Doc, I'm going to let you have the final word. Well, I'd like to share a, a short video I came across here last week that I think would close out today's Godcast. And I, I know Rick has seen it. I don't know if, Ed, if Edward has seen it yet or not. Many of our, I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners uh, haven't seen it. There was a parade that took place in uh, uh, Via Reggio, uh, Italy here back in February. And this, um, it was a carnival and they had, uh, you know, parades and floats and everything. And it's a very ostentatious presentation, but there was one particular presentation um, that they had that was just, it was actually, you know, I, it stirred me inside it, it, it to the st uh, extent that I thought to myself, oh my goodness, I understand that they were doing this mockingly, but at the same time, I could also see the truth in it. Um, so if we could pull up uh, cut number 33, this is from a carnival, a parade in Via Reggio, Italy here just a few months ago. And this is a five story statue of Donald Trump. And uh, with uh, various regalia and everything. And uh, the, the way it's titled is God Emperor Trump. And this is at the Via Reggio Carnival in Central Italy. And it, I, I, and as I mentioned earlier, this is done in sort of a mocking way, but in many ways, Rick, People have this idea of worship of the president at this point, that he's uh, the commander, that he's the a warrior conqueror. emperor. Um, and it, they'll, we'll probably see a close up of the head here. The eyes actually follow you uh, as uh, you look at them and everything. And Doc, I've heard Christian Zionists on uh, religious TV shows talking about Donald Trump as a warrior. Yes. Right. That God is using him to go into nations. And they're boasting that he is a warrior. Uh, I, I, you know, Control, I want you to uh, just continue playing this and this video. I want to read from Daniel chapter 7. Uh, and this is a, the prophet's uh, night vision. He saw the fourth beast. This is the beast that will rule the world at the end of time, just before Jesus Christ comes back. Daniel said... And four beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. And he said, after this, I saw in the night vision and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns. And then further in, into chapter seven, he says, uh, as for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. As for the 10 horns out of this kingdom, 10 kings shall arise, another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones, and he shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change the times in the law. Just think about, look at this video, and think about what we talked about today. Donald J. Trump proclaiming himself Savior. the second coming of God, the King of Israel, the, the chosen, chosen one. one, blaspheming, speaking great things against the Almighty God. But you need to know this. Something else the angel told Daniel.
the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, times and a half time. But this is where it gets better. The scene changes. But the court shall sit in judgment and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Mm. Hallelujah. That monster, whoever it is, whether it's Donald J. Trump or another pilot, whoever it is. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. It will be destroyed. Yes. And his kingdom shall be taken from him and given to the saints. Yes. And Almighty God shall leave his abode in heaven and come to a new earth. This earth will be destroyed. It will be burned up. There won't even be ashes left. There will be a new earth. And Almighty God is going to pack up everything in heaven and move to the new earth to live in New Jerusalem with the men and women who believed on the name of his son. Don't be left behind. And the tree of life shall be there in the garden, the garden of Eden. And New Jerusalem is the garden of Eden. It's the new improved garden of Eden. And the tree of life is there. And its leaves are for the healing of the nations. Amen. That's the true God. Not a blasphemer like Donald J. Trump. I serve the one true God and his resurrected son, Jesus Christ. I invite you to serve him too. Amen. He is the only king. There is no other name worthy to be praised, no other name worthy to be worshiped, no other name worthy to be feared, no other name to be worthy of, of desired, Jesus. The wonderful name of Jesus. That's it for today. We are here as the conscience of the church in the last days to bear witness of the King of glory. We'll be back tomorrow. God bless. God bless, God bless you. you.